is a special day, a special Sunday that God had already prepared right from the foundation of the world. I want to bless God for our senior brothers and sisters from Lagos, the National Priest team. The first time they came nowhere in Desire of Nations so many years ago, and when they took over, we started asking, is it the same equipment? Praise God. Is it the same microphone? I pray that your presence here will cause a re revival in this church in Jesus' name. And there will be a revolution, even in our music, in Jesus' name. And in the hearts to worship. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Amen. Let's clap for the national praise team. Amen. We've declared this month, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, a month of freedom. Amen. Which means those who are bound will be free. Amen. Which means there will be physical manifestation of the power of God in every area of your lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen. John chapter 8, verse 36. Today is a day of singing and dancing and praising God and entering into a new realm of freedom. Hallelujah. John chapter 8, verse 36. The Bible says, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. If the Son, therefore, when there is therefore, it means it's a continuation. We are continuing. He was saying so many things. But he now had to conclude in a way by saying, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. This morning, in the next few minutes, because um, it's, a month of, it's a morning of praise, a morning of singing and dancing from the uh, marrow of our bones this morning. Hallelujah. I just want to set a platform, set a stage for what we desire. Amen. Say, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free. You shall be free indeed. I will speak briefly in a short message titled, Free Indeed. Free Indeed. Free Indeed. Let's open our Bibles quickly to John chapter 11. The book of John chapter 11 and uh, verse 43. The Bible says in verse 43, and when he had thus spoken, Jesus, he first of all gave thanks. He cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible says, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, lose him and let him go. Lose him. It is time for his freedom. You know, there are many levels of freedom in life. There are some levels, like the case of Lazarus, it needed a miracle. His case was a case of somebody who had been dead for days. No more story. No need for, you know, checking or doing CPR. This man has been dead. It required a miracle to bring him back to life. There are situations in our lives that require miracle, raw miracle. Situations that you know that it has to be a, a divine intervention by the Almighty himself. And you know, we live in a country where, you know, we need miracle for a lot of things. Where there's no health care, there, you know, there must be miracles. Where there is no light, no water, there must be miracle. So, you know, it's okay to pursue miracles. But there are different levels. And the first scripture we're looking at this morning is for a situation where a man had died. Where things are dead. Some of us examine our life and we know that unless something happens, we cannot get there. You are already late in doing some things. But I want to pray for you this morning. 
in the name above every other name. I decree, wherever things have been killed and dead and buried, things that were designed to give you joy and promotion, they come alive this morning in the name of Jesus. I call them to come forth in the name of Jesus. That is the heritage of the children of God. When a miracle is needed, a miracle should happen. Hallelujah. Somebody following me this morning. Another scripture we look at this morning is John chapter 9. Another level. John chapter 9. Lazarus regained freedom from the depths of hell. John chapter 9, verse 1. I love John chapter 9. The Bible says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his breast. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? That is, who committed sin? Is it this man or his parents that he was born blind? All things being equal, a child should see. But in the case of this man, after he was born, they were rejoicing. You know, those days, not like now, those days, it takes sometimes two days before children open their eyes. But now, right from the delivery room, they are all shining. Things have changed. So they have observed this man or this little child, found out that his eyes did not open. Two days, three days, one week, you know, nothing happened. They kept him, they preserved him, gave him the right food, did everything right. But his eyes remained shut. He was blind from the day he was born. And he grew up like that. Everybody knew his story. And on this day, they had to ask Jesus, now look at this man. What happened that he was born blind? Look at this man. What happened that poverty seems to have been following their families? Look at this woman. Whenever she wants to make progress, she comes back to square one every time. It has to be a cause. There's a major issue in this family. They don't get married. You begin to wonder because when you see patterns and trends, you know, you begin to wonder what is happening. That is how they wondered that for this man to have been born blind, the parents must have sinned on himself. And Jesus said, neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Please do not throw away this scripture. This verse 3. He said that nothing is wrong with the guy. It's just because God wants to manifest his glory through him. There are things, there are situations we find ourselves. We are not bound. It's just because God wants to manifest his glory. But we still desire an intervention. Hallelujah. And that's what will happen in somebody's life this morning. Amen. And I'm serious. By the time you are stepping out of here today, you are not going back the same way you came. If you think you are that person, shout a big amen. Your case is just that God wants to use you as an example for glory. He wants to use you to boast. But this man did not know. And Jesus continued. The Bible says eventually he put sand on his eyes spit on his eye and said, go out, take your bath. And the man went into the pool of Siloam and he began to see. He began to see. Let me tell you something. Blindness is the worst kind of sickness. Are you hearing me? Blindness is the worst. It's worse than you cut your head, amputation, or you, whatever. Whatever it is, at least you can see. A blind man is in total that he can't even see the color of his clothes. They have to describe the food he's eating to him. Ah, you don't want to find yourself in that situation. You will never be, it will never be in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. So this man suddenly began to see. He saw colors for the first time. He had been held banned by blindness. 
But his day of freedom came. And every seed of blindness disappeared in a moment. And he began to see. And people wondered what has happened to him. That this man who we know was blind is now seeing. Another level of miracle. Different from when the person was totally dead. Or when the situation is totally dead. Another level is a level where God wants to glorify himself. And brethren, 99% of the miracles of God or the issues of our lives is to glorify the Almighty. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what it has been like. That situation in your life that is making you to cry and weep right now is because God wants to glorify himself. He wants to glorify himself. He wants to reverse that situation so that his name can be praised. He wants to make people know you. You know, some years back, when we didn't have chairs in our sitting room, you know, those days, my wife didn't want people to come and visit us. So when people say they are coming, she would be looking for one kind of excuse. On, I said, no, 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 no. This is the best time for them to come. Oh, it is the best time when there is no cheer. So that when they come, when there is cheer, they will know that God has done great things. Don't hide that problem. Amen. You don't have to hide it. You're not bound. It's just so that the purpose of God will be made manifest in your life. And in this man's case, the almighty God healed him. Then arguments began. You know, they will argue when you, when you get, get your miracle. Hallelujah. They will say, this is not the person we used to know. I pray that's what you will say concerning me. Uh, when I begin to manifest. When I begin to rise. Hallelujah. You say, is that pastor? He used to be our pastor. Uh, look at him now. Praise the name of the Lord. And that will be your own testimony also. In the name of Jesus. So in this man's case, argument started. I'm going somewhere this morning. In this man's case, argument started. You know, in verse 8, the neighbors, therefore, they saw him. They said, this is the man that was blind. And he sat and he has been begging. Is this not that man we know? Some said, this is he. Yeah, he's the one. Others said, he looks like him. The man heard them and he shouted, I am he. No, there's no doubt. I am the one that used to beg. I am the one that was born blind. Look at me now. I can see. That would be the testimony of somebody here this morning. Oh, if you are the one, shout a big amen. If you are the one, shout a big amen. You will have to tell them, I, I was that person you used to know. I'm that person you used to know. Sorry. Because God is doing something in your situation. In this month of freedom, tell your neighbor, get ready. Uh, tell somebody else, say, get ready. Because this will be your month. I say, this will be your month. I say, this will be your month. Okay, like I did last week, like the Almighty God said last week, he said, I should tell everybody. But I should tell Buki, this will be your month. You know, they said they should tell the disciples that Jesus has risen. The angel said, tell the disciples and tell Peter. He said, tell the disciples, then tell Peter. Because Peter was the one with an issue. Peter had carried sorrow. He had been disappointed in himself. When that angel came to announce, he remembered this issue of Peter. I'm announcing to somebody this morning, your issue is before the angels. He said, I should tell the angel disciples this morning, but I should tell you, this morning is your own morning. Peter, this is your morning. He said, I should tell the disciples that, he, that miracles begin to happen. But I should tell you especially that this morning is your own morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, if you are in the same boat with Peter, somebody is visiting your house this morning. Somebody is visiting your business this morning. He's visiting your children this morning. It may be for everybody, but your name is on their book. Because there's a visitation for you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout freedom. Shout it loud and freedom. Hallelujah. So they began to argue, have your seat. 
He said, what happened? He said, a man that is called Jesus. Sometimes the testimony of non-born again people is very, very good. Very interesting. When you ask a small man a question, a, 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 you know, a big man a question, I mean, a very intelligent person a question, what is 2x plus 2x? And they begin to wonder. But ask a baby, 4x. The testimony of those who are just coming, sometimes is very sweet. This man said, a man called Jesus. I am not born again. I don't know him. I've never seen him before. They did not even carry him to Jesus. He didn't even hear people shouting. But he must hear people shouting. Said, oh, I am here. This one was on his own. And they said, ah, there was an argument that who, who, who made this man to be blind? What happened that he is blind? He did not, they did not carry him to Jesus. His own case was different. It was a hidden miracle. But there was an argument over his condition. I want to announce to you this morning. It doesn't matter how hidden, how unknown your problem is. There will be an argument over your case. And they will call you out and you receive your solution. The guy said, ah, a man called Jesus mixed, you know, clay and put it on my eyes. And I began to see. Hallelujah. He said, I should go and wash. So they said to him, where is he? In verse 12. He said, I don't know. They brought him to the Pharisees. I said, this man that, that was blind, look at him. It was Sabbath. You know, the Pharisees, they always see, you know, they, they don't see very, they see things from afar. We are always far away from the real issues. The Bible says, they also asked him, how did you receive your sight? He said the same story. Praise the name of the Lord. And this argument continued. And they said to the blind man, verse 17, what do you say of him that he opened your eyes? He said he's a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind. Everybody knew this man was blind. But they just didn't want to believe. There are people who will not believe your miracle. You know, sometimes people say, ah, it wasn't a miracle. It was a coincidence. And you know what? I told them, if through coincidence, I receive my healing. <laughs> if by coincidence, I, get, I got blessed financially. If by coincidence, my wife got healed from cancer. If by coincidence, my children, things are happening. Then let it be coincidence. Then coincidence is good enough. Hallelujah. He said it is by coincidence. They now went to his parents. He said, come and tell us. This one said, go and ask him. He's of age. Hallelujah. Then they called the man in verse 24 again that was blind. And said unto him, give God the praise. We know this man is a, is a sinner. Listen to his answer. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or he's not a sinner, I don't know. But one thing I know is that I used to be blind. But now I can see. I used to be blind. But now I can see all of you. I don't care who he is. I know my situation has changed. If you don't acknowledge him, it doesn't matter. The truth of it is that coincidence, as you call it, has changed my life. I pray for you in this month of April. Something will surely happen in your life. I shout a big amen this morning. Something will happen in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Then they asked him another question. Okay. <laughs> How did he open it? Then the man got angry in verse 27. He said, I have told you already and you did not hear. Wherefore, how will you hear it? When will you hear it? If you hear it, will you also be his disciples? Why are you asking me? Then they reviled him. Remember the story of Lazarus, the other Lazarus, and the rich man that died. You remember? And they went to different places. And Lazarus, you know, was there enjoying in heaven. And there was a big gulf between the rich man in hell 
And the rich man said, Ah, Lord, just send Lazarus. Let him go and tell my people that there is a place called hell. God said, I have sent people to them. They did not listen. That they will never listen. And that is a statement of condemnation. A statement that is meant for the children who are called the children of perdition. And that is not you this morning. And how does that relate to us today? What things have we heard? How many times have you heard? I've told you before in this church, if you have been a Christian for 10 years, you have heard every message. This message, you have heard it before. By the time you are this old in church, you should be winning souls. You cannot come and be sitting down. You have heard every message. Praise the name of the Lord. So this man told them, just similar, said, if I keep telling you, because they kept asking. And we have Christians like that who never come to the knowledge of the truth. We hear, we hear, we hear, we hear. And like these people, we keep asking and asking and asking and seeking and seeking, running from one place to the other, discarding the words that we hear. And if we will change in any way in this month of February, I mean April, month of freedom, is to change in the capacity that the Almighty has given us to retain his word. I also pray for that for myself. That I will not hear the word of God and throw it away and keep attending programs. I've said it before that if I were, if I were you know, to, to, to vet programs or people that go for programs, I would, uh, you, where, where, uh, did, you, did you pray? When did you worship? Do you read Bible? If you don't read Bible, you don't worship, you don't pray, and you are going for a program, to go and do what? Praise the name of the Lord. So he answered and said, you know, Jesus now heard about him. Let me just shift to verse 35. Jesus heard that they cast out the man. And when he had found him, he said unto him, does thou believe on the Son of God? Do you believe on the Son of God? Look at the answer of the man. He answered and said, who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Praise the name of the Lord. The freedom we want from God this, where, this month is the freedom that will bring us to the place of worship. To the place of honoring God in another dimension. This man said, If he is God, that can do this thing in my life, then I worship him forever. Praise the name of the Lord. And that was why in John chapter 8, we went through it initially. The Bible says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You know, they said to, they were having a conversation with Jesus, the Pharisees, that we are children, sons of Abraham. You are saying that we are bound we are seed of Abraham. We have been free. Jesus said, if you are seed of Abraham, you will not be seeking to kill me. Rather, you will be loving me. Because that is what seeds of Abraham, that's what they do. He said, you are only behaving like your father, the devil. That you want to kill and you are lying. But that if you are truly the seed of Abraham, then your heart will be a heart of loving God, of loving, of loving me, not to be seeking to kill me. Praise the name of the Lord. And from the way you are behaving, the way you are lying, the way you are seeking to kill me, you are not a, the seed of Abraham. You may be the physical seed by generation or whatever, but you are not the spiritual seed of Abraham. That's why Jesus said, the only person that can deliver you from being that kind of person to be one that worships, that worships, you know, God Almighty is the one who is the Son of God. And he said in that place, for you to be totally free, you have to be freed by the Son. 
If the Son shall make you free, we shall be free indeed. You know, we have, we, I know we come for miracles. I know we come to church. But we have other things in our minds that give us a big burden every time. But we're not able to arrive at that point of freedom where we begin to see the way God sees. Hallelujah. We argue every time with the Spirit. And we do things that are not of God that defines us as children of the devil. And if we want to be honest to ourselves, so even, even if you are not honest, have a honest desire that in this month, Lord, change my heart. Let, it, let me be a seed of Abraham indeed. Son of the living God, free me indeed. Without a desire, you cannot come to the place of acknowledgement. Amen? To the place of manifestation. I want you to bow your heads this morning. Free indeed. Free indeed. Miracle of raising the dead. Miracle of glorifying the name of the Almighty. And the miracle of salvation. They said they were not bound. They didn't even know they were bound. They said we are not bound. Jesus told them that you are bound. You are bound by lies. You are bound by the actions of the devil. Oh, they said we are the leaders in church. Oh, we have been doing this so good. Our life can testify of the miracles of God. There's a miracle of the dead. There's a miracle of glorifying God's name. And the final miracle that makes you free indeed is the one that the Son of God gives. I want you to set your hearts this morning. Let there be a desire. Sometimes we pray for the things we really do not mean. You just pray the prayer and leave the rest to God. That in my life, I want to be free indeed. I want to be ready for the rapture. I want to be born again. Not just the miracles of, you know, every time there's money, 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 business and all that. But as we worship, as we pray this morning, there should be a junction that we need to meet with the Lord. If that scripture says that there's a place called free indeed, Lord, I want to be free. Doesn't matter how I have come to you this morning. Father, I want to be free. I want to be free. It will pay me to be free. They say we are not bound because we are Christians. But he told them, your actions, they speak otherwise. I want to be free. You are here this morning. You are not born again, you know it. Wherever you are, just wave your hand and I will pray with you from here. Because I want you to be born again. Jesus wants to glorify his name in your life. He wants to make you a sign and a wonder. By doing great things through you and even in you. Wave your hand and I'll pray with you from here. Quickly. I know you are here. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Thank you for that. Any other hand? Quickly. I know you are here. It's a special morning. Just lift up the hand. Any other hand? Quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. You are debating in your mind. You don't have to. Don't postpone today. Wherever you are, lift up your hand and I'll pray with you. Just give them the cards. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, I bless you for this moment. Thank you for your children. Thank you for the salvation of their soul. 
This is why you sent your son Jesus to free us from every shackle of bondage. Father Almighty, I lift up these ones unto you who have signified that they really, really want to walk with you to the end. The Bible says when you save, you save to the uttermost. Father, please save them to the end in the mighty name of Jesus. Deliver them from every shackle of bondage. Free them from every captivity. That, Father, Lord, they will be free indeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Very quickly, take your, you know, your books, whatever you can with. Somebody's waiting for you at the back. Just wave. Just wave. Somebody's waving. Just go and quickly meet them. Hallelujah. Now, let's rise on our feet, everybody. Rise on your feet, everybody. We believe that you have been blessed by this message. We'll be glad to have you worship with us every Sunday at 8 a.m. and every Wednesday at 6 p.m. God bless you.